A very good morning my dear students. Hope you all are safe and healthy at your home and also doing your studies on regular basis. So today our topic is chapter number 2 classification of plants. Children we already have done the explanation of the chapter more than half chapter we already have completed and the last and very important topic was left that is kingdom plenty. So before continuing the chapter let us recap the previous kingdoms which we have discussed. This is the five kingdom classification given by Robert Whittaker. Robert Whittaker has classified or categorized the living world into five main kingdoms as you can see Kingdom Monera Kingdom Protesta Kingdom Fungi Kingdom Planty Kingdom Animalia So these are the five main kingdoms under which we can group or categorize all the living organisms and whenever we study about any classification we've always move on from simple to complex so that is why we will discuss step by step first of all kingdom monera in which only the basic characteristics I'll just recap then we will move on to today's topic kingdom monera the main characteristics are that they are prokaryotes and unicellular organisms. Prokaryotes means unorganized nucleus. The nucleus is not surrounded by a nuclear membrane and that is known as nucleoid. Then comes the second kingdom protesta. They are eukaryotes and unicellular. Eukaryotes means organized nucleus which is surrounded by a nuclear membrane. Third is kingdom fungi. We can see step by step. They all are eukaryotes. Then they are multicellular with cell wall. These are the three main characteristics of kingdom fungi. They are eukaryotes, multicellular and with cell wall. Next is kingdom plenty. The main characteristics, obviously they are eukaryotes, multicellular, with cell wall and chlorophyll is present. That is why they can prepare their own food. Now the fifth kingdom is kingdom animalia. They are eukaryotes, multicellular, without cell wall. Cell wall is absent. As you have already done in your class 6 also, that cell wall is present only in the plant cell and it is absent in animal cell. So these are the five main kingdoms which you need to study and learn step by step. Kingdom Monera, Kingdom Protesta, Kingdom Fungi, Kingdom Planty and Kingdom Animalia. We already have discussed, I explained to you first three kingdoms that is kingdom monera, protesta and fungi. So our today's topic is kingdom plenty. Now see very carefully whenever we study about any kingdom first of all we need to just recall and retain the basic characteristics of the organisms which are below which belongs to that particular kingdom. So kingdom plenty all the organisms which belongs to kingdom plenty have these main characteristic features. First they all are eukaryotes means they have the nucleus organized nucleus surrounded by a nuclear membrane. Second they are multicellular means more than one cell is present in their body. Third is with cell wall. As you know this is the characteristic feature of the plant cell that the cell membrane is surrounded by the cell wall. 
and the fourth one is chlorophyll is present chlorophyll is the green pigment which is present in the leaves which helps to trap the solar energy for the process of photosynthesis that is why plants can prepare their own food so these are the main four characteristic features of the organisms belonging to kingdom plantae first they are eukaryotes second multicellular third with cell wall and fourth chlorophyll is present now as you know kingdom plantae is the second largest kingdom after animalia and the organisms belonging to kingdom plantae are autotrophs now what do you understand by the term autotrophs you can break or split the term into two parts auto means self and trophs means trophic or trophs means to synthesize that means if you will break it into two parts in between so first is auto means self and trophs means synthesize or prepare that means these organisms can prepare or synthesize their own food that is why they are known as autotrophic organisms so this is the distinctive feature of kingdom plantae that they can synthesize or prepare their own food that is why the mode of nutrition is autotrophic and the organisms are known as autotrophs now the next is we can divide or categorize the kingdom plantae into two main parts cryptogams and phanerogams i'll show you here kingdom plantae it is further divided into two parts or two groups cryptogams and phanerogams as you can see here cryptogams are the seedless non flowering plant that means seeds and flowers are absent and there are three main groups the first is algae then second mosses third ferns then the second group is phanerogams which include the flowering plants with seeds that means seeds and flowers are present but phanerogams are further divided into two subgroups that is gymnosperms and angiosperms gymnosperms have naked seeds means seeds are not enclosed within the fruit and angiosperms the seeds are enclosed within the fruit so basically we divided kingdom plantae into two groups cryptogams which further has three subgroups algae mosses ferns then second group of kingdom plantae phanerogams which has two subgroups that is gymnosperms and angiosperms so basically the five groups are there under kingdom plantae that is number 1 number 1 algae number 2 mosses number 3 ferns number 4 gymnosperm and number 5 angiosperms so these are the five groups included in kingdom plantae and we will study these groups one by one now first of all just see here cryptogams cryptogams are characterized by seedless non flowering plants that means if you just recall the basic parts of a plant they are root stem leaves flower fruits and seeds buds are also there so that means in cryptogams the basic parts that is root stem and leaves are present but they include seedless and non flowering plants that means seed and flowers are absent now basically there are three as you can see algae mosses and ferns algae mosses and ferns so we will discuss one by one the first one is algae 
and the name of the group is Thelophyta. So algae comes under the group Thelophyta. The first is they are aquatic in habitat. Aquatic means which lives in water. They may be unicellular, multicellular or filamentous. Filamentous means which gives thread-like appearance. Thread-like, very thin thread-like appearance. And third is mostly they are green having chlorophyll but some algae also have the colors like red and brown. For example, Spirogyra, Eulothrix, Clamidomonas. They all are the examples of few common algae. So you need to learn at least two examples of algae. Spirogyra, Eulothrix, Clamidomonas. Any two you can learn with correct spelling. So algae belongs to kingdom Thelophyta. They all are aquatic in habitat, means found in water, grow in water. Children, you must have seen the stagnant water, not the flowing water, the stagnant water, whether it is in the, uh, in, on the surface of the water bodies. You can see the green, green sticky kind of substance that is actually the algae, which is slippery also. You can see near the tap or water bodies also, the green cotton like slippery they are actually algae which are the living organisms and they have the basic parts that is uh, root stem leaves but the body is actually not differentiated into these basic parts so you can rec uh, you cannot recognize the separate parts like root stems and leaves and that is why their body is known as thallus thallus means the bunch of cells where you cannot differentiate the different uh, parts. You cannot recognize the different part that where is the root, where is stem and where is leaf. So it is a thallus, the simple structure thallus where the parts are not differentiated. I'll show you the structure also. Just see here. These are the pictures of Spirogyra, the filamentous algae. You can see here the very thin thread like structures. So this is the example of filamentous algae that is Spirogyra. They look like the filament or thin threads and they are present in the water bodies on the surface of water. So we have discussed about the first category of cryptogams that is algae. The next one is mosses which comes under the group bryophyta. They are known as bryophytes. They are commonly known as bryophytes because they are grouped under bryophyta. Now what are the main features? First They grow as green velvety layers in the moist place such as damp soil, on the bark of trees, on damp walls. Children, if you, you must have seen if you visited hilly areas, the mountains. There you can see the big big stones or rocks of the mountains on the hills. And those stones or rocks are covered with the green velvety grass like very small grass like appearance you can see very velvet very smooth they are known as mosses or you can say bryophytes so they are the green velvety layer they give the appearance of the carpet you must have seen the green carpet so that is the same appearance and they can grow on the rocks or stones but where they grow mainly wherever the moisture is there the moist place like the damp soil, the bark of trees or on the damp walls. Now they have stems and leaves but no roots. They have the stems, you can see the stems and leaves which are very small in size but roots are absent. Instead of roots, they have thread like structures called rhizoids. 
rhizoids which stick to the surface and absorb water and what is the surface on which the mosses are growing that is the rock only rock or the bark of the trees so these rhizoids they can absorb water from the surface so that means mosses or bryophytes have the stem and leaves but roots are not present third very important feature is they are also known as amphibians of plant kingdom why now what are amphibians you know very well amphibians are the organisms or the animals which can live both in water as well as on land so they are known as amphibians because they can grow on land on the bark of trees or on the rocks but they need water to reproduce that is why they can easily grow on the mountains or hilly areas wherever the rocks or uh, rocks or stones are there why because continuously you can see the streams jo jharne hote hain they are continuously flowing on the mountains so whenever the water is there the rocks or the surface is already moist so they can reproduce because of that moisture because of the presence of water and that is why they are known as amphibians of plant kingdom because they can grow on land but they need water to reproduce so these are the main features of mosses which belongs to kingdom uh, which belongs to group bryophyta kingdom plantae the third one cryptogams the third one are the ferns which belongs to pteridophyta now look here very carefully pteridophyta in which letter p is silent so we pronounce it as pteridophyta now what are the main features first they grow in most of the gardens for their beautiful leaves children ferns have very beautiful leaves so that is why they can also be grown in the gardens mostly in hilly areas second they have well formed leaves stem and roots they have all the three basic parts that is leaves stem and roots but they do not produce flowers and seeds that means flowers and seeds are absent third is their leaves produce very small rounded bodies on the under surface which contain tiny spores very tiny spores are there instead of seeds they have spores which are produced on the leaves and these spores they can get scrat scattered means they can spread to produce the new plants so these are the main characteristic features that they have leaves stem and roots but do not produce flowers and seeds and their leaves produce small rounded bodies which are known as spores and wherever the spores fall down when these spores fall down on the surface they reproduce they grow into the new plant that is ferns so the spores get scattered to produce the new plants here i can show you the picture of mosses and ferns see very carefully the first one the first figure is mosses you can see the velvet grass like appearance and they can grow on the stones on the rocks of the mountains and the second is fern you can see the beautiful leaves so that is why they are also grown as ornamental purpose ornamental ornamental means for their beauty they are grown in the gardens for their beauty so they have the ornamental value so these are the mosses and ferns now one by one we will study the basic we will just recap the basic characters the first one algae cryptogams have three groups algae mosses ferns first one algae which have no root stem or leaf that means the body is not differentiated into root stem and leaf second mosses they have leaves and stem but no roots instead of roots they have rhizoids and third ferns 
they have all the three main parts that is roots stems and leaves but flower fruits and seeds are absent so this is about the cryptogams the three groups we studied algae mosses and ferns next comes just look here the picture this is a fern the leaves of fern and the leaf of a fern showing the spore containing bodies on its lower surface just now i told you that on the lower surface of the leaf present very small tiny spores you can see this is the closed view very small small spores and these spores can fall down on the surface and they can reproduce or grow as the new plant this way they reproduce with the help of spores now next category is phenerogams phenerogams are the flowering plants with seeds which is further grouped into two that is the gymnosperms and the angiosperms gymnosperms in the main feature is seeds naked means naked means which doesn't have any covering so that means seeds are not enclosed within the fruit and angiosperms the seeds are enclosed within the fruit this is the main difference between these two groups now first gymnosperms if we will split the term into two it becomes gymno and sperm gymno means naked without any covering and sperm is the seed that means they have naked seeds naked seeds means fruit is absent the first point is they bear seeds but no fruits fruits are not there they are mostly evergreen that is they do not shed all the leaves at one time so they are known as evergreen trees the big trees do not bear true flowers but they have the seeds inside the cones so cones are the special characteristic features present in the gymnosperm trees some cones are male while others are female the examples are given here a few examples you can see pine fir cedar spruce they are the common gymnosperm trees now i'll show you the pictures also you must if you have visited the hilly areas you must have seen this conical conical means cone shaped trees which are commonly known as conifers which are conical in shape so these are the examples of gymnosperms pine pine tree fir tree cedar these are the common example of gymnosperms so these are the main features of gymnosperms next comes angiosperms before that let me show you the cones just now i told you that gymnosperms do not have the flowers instead of flower they have cone you can see the structures these are the pine cones and inside these cones present the spores instead of seeds they have spores which can reproduce or grow as new plants new gymnosperm plants next comes angiosperm angio further you can see the division angio means the case or fruit and sperm means the seed that means the seeds are enclosed within the fruit now the first point is they bear fruit flowers and seeds so that is why angiosperm is the most advanced group of kingdom plantae the seeds develop within the female part of the flower called ovary you already have done we already have discussed about the structure of a flower the parts of a flower then ovary grows into a fruit containing the seeds inside and it is characterized by the presence of the seed leaves which are known as cotyledons you know that cotyledon is the main part of the seed which stores food for the baby plant now angiosperms are further of two types children you already have done this in class 5 as well as class 
so we will just recap the two type of angiosperms that is monocot and dicot mono means one cot is the short form of cotyledon so the monocots the contain only one cotyledon or seed leaf the examples of monocots are rice wheat maize grass di means two and cot is the short form of cotyledon so they contain two cotyledon or, or seed leaves the examples are rose pea beans gram and mango so these are the difference between angiosperm and uh, angiosperm the monocots and dicots so these are the difference between gymnosperm and angiosperm which we just have discussed and this table is given in your book and these are the difference between monocot and dicot we just have discussed and this table is also given in your book so you can learn the difference between gymnosperm and angiosperm monocot and dicot and here you can see the first one is the gram seed which is the dicot you can see two cotyledons and the second one is the main seed the maize which have single cotyledon so these are the example of dicot and monocot seeds dicot means two cotyledons monocot means one cotyledon so children this is about today we have discussed i explained to you kingdom planty so your homework is to read kingdom planty from the book and underline the important terms and also you have to learn the table of difference which is given in your book okay children have a good day take care of yourself and study regularly